What happens in a railroad yard, and why would you want to model one? And how is Burr coming along on his new staging yard? These are the two questions in today's video. Welcome to part 47 of my continuing series of model railroad videos. In this video, we're simply going to observe what it takes to break down and make up a train uh, without too much detail at, at a high speed, just so you can get a sense of what's involved. And I'll also give you a few clips of the installation of the third segment of our new staging yard, which is going to represent and store trains that are headed south of Seattle in approximately the Black River Junction area. Here you can see several people operating in my main yard, a model of the Interbay slash Balmer yard in Seattle that originally was built by the Great Northern and then became operated by the Burlington Northern in 1970 and then is in use today by the Burlington Northern Santa Fe. This model railroad is attempting to represent 1973, which is three years after the Burlington Northern merger. And you can see some signature cars such as the open auto racks, 40-foot box cars, and that type of thing. Today, our, our yardmaster slash industrial switcher was Scott and he's got a caboose on his switcher, which means that he's about to drop that caboose in the caboose track and, or actually it looks like he's dropping it on the end of a cut of cars that he's making up is into a train that will head south, which is to the right. You can see Scott handling his throttle and the car cards to try to figure out which cars go in which track for which train. And I've speeded the video up now, so we won't have to wait for every single operation. But clearly he's pulling that whole cut of cars that he put the caboose on in order to drop some of the cars in different tracks in the yard. If you want a little more background on this yard, look at my first video called Part 1, Switching in Interbay, where I actually lay out the track numbers and give you a lot more background. So he's left the two tank cars out there on the ladder, which is something you can do if you're going to temporarily drop a different car off and then go back to those cars. So let's see what he does now. He's got the Southern Pacific box on the end. He wants to put in the adjacent track all three of those cars, clearly. And now you can see he's got his car cards for those three cars to handle. And now he's coming back and got the two tank cars. Now we'll see what he does with those. Judging by the angle on that flat car next to the tanks, it looks like he's again temporarily parked those cars while he puts the trailer on flat car load on a different track. Oh, look, he's putting more than that trailer on that track. He's pushing a whole bunch of cars in there. In fact, it looks like he's pulling them out. A lot could be said about using the front edge of the layout to hold car cards, but we'll let that go for the moment. You also could wonder what on earth is a Penn Central caboose doing in the caboose line up here when we're supposed to be representing Seattle? It's a good question. The short answer is that this new release from Tangent Scale Models is, is a spectacular thing. And it has uh, magnetic reed switches to turn the lights on. And the secondary answer is that I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, so I have a thing for the Penn Central. And we sometimes run something called the plutonium train, just for laughs, full of Three Mile Island nuclear waste headed for the disposal site here in Washington State. And we run Penn Central locomotives to haul that train, but I've never had a Penn Central caboose before. So now that train is complete, and you can look forward to seeing that in some future video. Or you can just shrug your shoulders. But wait, weren't we watching some switching action here? I got a little sidetracked there. I just wanted to make sure you uh, didn't freak out over that Penn Central caboose there. So uh, it looks like he added another tank car to the flat car that's over on the ladder to the far right. And uh, now maybe he's adding another tank car to it. 
Yep, bang. He seems to have parked that cut now over on what I believe is track four. And now he's back in track two, pulling another bunch of cars to classify. That blue box car the switcher is going by right now is from the Lost Dutchman Railroad that I was just operating on a couple weeks ago down in Phoenix, Arizona. It belongs to David Dwaron, both the box car and the layout down there in Phoenix. So we generally route that box car towards Phoenix. So meanwhile, he's brought that Sioux line car over onto the track that he's building his train on. That's the A track, one of our arrival departure tracks. You can tell he, that's the train he's building because he's got the caboose on the end of it. Although, I'm not sure you would do that in practice. You would wait and get the caboose at the end, but never mind. I think we have one more thing for him to do, and, and then I can show you the progress on the staging yard construction. He's taking a couple of those cars that were over on track four, and he's adding it to something. We'll see what he adds it to. Yeah. Oh, see, look, he's he's doing some serious classification. That that tank car goes there, and the other tank car goes back where he got it. So he just basically pulled that tank car out of a stack of cars because he realized he needed it there on track two. So now that we've watched some serious uh, flat switching classification in the yard, let's go and look at the progress we've been making on building a new staging yard for the south end of the railroad. As you saw in the last video, we put up two sections, three tracks wide, left over from Al Frasch's original in-scale layout on Whidbey Island. And when he dismantled that layout, I took three pieces of plywood with two by twos screwed to them and, and repurposed them to build this staging yard. So here we have the third section coming in and we're trying to position it just right. Of course, I've got it speeded up so we don't have to watch it in real time. That little wooden piece is for gauging the height. And of course, we're just trying to clamp it in place so that the rails will be at the right height. The rail heads will match. And once we decide we are happy with it, and we've got a couple of guys holding up the shelf at just the right height, I'm going to put some screws in that. We, we debated which end to put the screws in, but decided this putting it in the end was probably the best. So everyone's still holding it in just the right spot. I put in that first screw, and now we can go down to the other end, put in a couple more screws. They're going right into those two by two studs. Don't ask me how we're gonna get a nice looking backdrop for the lower shelf, but that's for some other day. It's a little complicated when you have these struts coming down into what would otherwise be a nice looking backdrop. It would be hard to imagine doing this job by myself. I'm really appreciative of my friends that come over and help with these kinds of things. It tends to be a lot more fun too. Anyway, we moved right on down the board until we had every single stud anchoring the two by two that was holding up the six, foot, six inch wide shelf. The alignment looked pretty good. So I turned my attention to sliding the rail joiners between the two pieces of flex track on either shelf. We took the clamp off and then got the pliers up and the flashlight and did the best we could under the very awkward circumstances there. Let's just say that it was difficult and my arms and back were sore afterwards, but we got the job done. The next job was to connect some wires to the new shelf from the existing DCC circuit so that we could try running some trains. 
and make sure that it worked. Testing, you might say. I had already glued down the track and installed feeder wires, so it was pretty easy to disconnect this to the layout. At long last, after many weeks of anticipation, the first locomotive ran on the new staging yard. Here we have some UP diesels that were up there, and we're just making sure that they run properly. And of course, at this point, the shelf is not connected to the railroad yet. It's just a 18 or 20 foot long shelf sitting by itself. So we just wanted to make sure we had good clearances and uh, good wiring. On our first run. A lot of well-deserved celebration. Under Robin's supervision. <laughs> and I'm meant to be professional here. <laughs> As you can see, reaching in there and re-railing locomotives and cars is very awkward. That's just the way it goes with a semi-hidden staging yard. I, I don't intend for anybody to get up there and operate trains. We just want to run trains in and out of the staging tracks. So hopefully it, uh, it'll work all right. I installed Pico turnouts with a very strong turnout springs, which uh, allows them to be set uh, reliably with the finger flick, but it's not the easiest thing to see except as feeling it with your finger, as you can see we're trying to do here. It would be better to rig it all up with turnout throws and uh, lit control panels. Uh, maybe someday we'll do that. See, he's using a little um, inspection mirror to make sure the track looks okay. Then off the train goes into the sunset. And now it comes back on a different track. We used that high cube UP boxcar to make sure clearances were good, but we'll obviously check it more with double stack trains and everything else in the future. And speaking of the future, the next video we'll do will show you how we built a ramp to connect this stranded staging yard back to the main line on the main train layout. So I hope you'll join me for that next video which will probably be a combination like this one of some operations and some construction, since we seem to be making good headway here. But before we go, let's just take a look at the overall layout of this yard taken a few weeks later. You can see that I've managed to put a few switches in there for trains of different lengths to be stored in staging. And then this is a shot from a better angle showing those three UP test engines that we were using, as well as the high cube box car, and the way it looks up there in these cramped quarters. I guess you could say it's not hidden staging, it's just partially hidden staging. But it'll do, it'll do, we're very pleased with it. If you missed my first video, part 46, where I described the installation of the first pieces, I'll put a link to that in the description below. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this, and this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains.